All right, good morning, boys and girls. I'm so happy to be here this morning. I am here to teach you chapters three and four of unit 11, the Civil War. All right, let's get started. A couple of reminders before we begin today. Uh, don't forget to check Agilastic and to complete any active assessments that you have not yet completed. Uh, make sure you're completing iReady Math and Reading. Uh, remember, we need 45 minutes of math and reading a week. If you do about 10 minutes a day, um, you should be able to meet that requirement by Friday. Complete math and ELA assignments and videos, so still work on those packets. And just a reminder that we are monitoring GoGuardian throughout the week, so make sure you're using your Chromebooks as you would in school. And also make sure that you're completing and sending assignments. We're also tracking whether or not students are sending in those assignments. So on the pages where it says to text your teacher, make sure you're texting us those pictures because in our trackers, if you're not turning those things in, then we just mark it as missing. So just so you know, we are keeping track of assignments too. All right, let's get started. Our agenda for the day. I'm going to state our objective, our big question. I'm gonna read chapter three to you. You are gonna read chapter four on your own. And I'm gonna go over independent work expectations. And then of course, I'm gonna give you some more reminders and say goodbye. So today is over chapters three and four, and we're learning about the Missouri Compromise and the growth of an anti-slavery feeling. So in chapters one and two, we read about how slavery was getting reinvigorated because of the cotton gin and how more and more southern states wanted slavery because it was just easier to clean the cotton if they had more slaves because the cotton gin so slavery was starting to become a big deal but remember northern states really didn't have as many slaves so this whole uh, two chapters is kind of about that so it's about the missouri compromise and it's also about um how anti-slavery feelings were growing, especially in the South, and what happened as a result. So our two objectives are, I can describe the provisions, the Missouri Compromise, which is chapter three, and I can identify Harriet Tubman and explain how the Underground Railroad worked. I know a lot of you heard about Harriet Tubman um, in the past, especially in second grade, so here we're gonna learn more about what she did for the Underground Ra Railroad and how she helped to free some slaves. It's pretty genius and awesome, so can't wait for you guys to read that chapter. Our big question, how did the Missouri Compromise attempt to resolve the issues of slavery in territories? So today we're going to focus on the territories um, that were conflicted about whether or not slavery should continue or if they should be a non-slave state. So this Missouri Compromise is going to attempt to resolve these issues. I want you to listen for how it resolved the issues. Chapter 3, the Missouri Compromise. The spread of slavery. By the early 1800s, Southern slaveholders demanded that slavery be allowed to spread into America's Western lands. Most Northerners were against this idea, largely because they wanted to reserve territories for white settlers. They opposed the Southern slave owners' demands. In the end, this disagreement between the North and the South would become one of the major issues that led to the Civil War. Remember, a territory is an area of land. Before then, however, the two sections of the country tried to settle their disagreement through a compromise. To understand this issue, it's important to know about the differences between states and territories in the history of the United States. Today, the United States of America has 50 states. Each state has its own constitution and each of each makes many of its own laws. So here is a picture, it's called a new nation, and this map shows America as it was in the beginning of the American Revolution. So this is what America looked like. As you can probably tell, there's not a whole lot of states, but there's a lot of territories in this picture. In the beginning though, there were only 13 states. The other states were formed over a period of time from a huge trunks of land that the United States gained from countries such as Great Britain, France, and Mexico. 
In the early history of the United States, Congress wisely decided to set up a three-step process for turning those lands into states. In the first step, Congress created a territory or sometimes several territories. As a part of this first step, Congress made laws for the territory. The second step came when the population of the territory reached 5,000 adult males. Then the people were allowed to elect their own representatives and make many of their own laws. When a territory's population reached 60,000 free inhabitants, it could ask Congress to be admitted into the Union with its own state constitution. That was the third and final step, the step that allowed a territory to become a state. In those days, each state decided for itself whether to allow slavery within its borders. Southern states allowed slavery. Most northern states did not. But for territories, slavery was a different matter. During a territory's first step towards statehood, it was Congress that made all the rules, including whether to allow slavery. Suppose Congress voted not to allow slavery in a territory. Would anyone who owned slaves or who wanted to own slaves choose to live there? Certainly not. So when the population became large enough for the territory to start making its own laws, almost no one living there would be in flavor, favor of slavery. And the new legislator would pass laws against it. Later still, when the territory was ready to become a state, it would write a state constitution that would prevent slavery. Of course, the opposite would happen if Cong Congress permitted slavery when the territory was formed. Slave or free? Regardless of how a person felt about the spread of slavery into the Western lands, the first law Congress passed for any territory was important. That is what led to a big argument in 1820 between the North and the South. The argument concerned slavery in the Louisiana Purchase, a huge area that the United States had bought from France. When Congress began to form new territories in this region, it did not make any laws about slavery. Southern slaveholders felt free to move there with their slaves. The first of these new territories to become a state was Louisiana which entered the Union in 1812 as a slave state. Seven years later, a second territory was ready for statehood. This was Missouri Territory, which also asked to come into the Union as a slave state. At that time, there were 11 slave states and 11 free states in the Union. The Northern free states were against adding more slave states. They said this would give the South too much power in Congress. Nonsense, replied the South. Without any more slave states, it was the North that would have too much power in Congress. Each side was determined not to give in. One New York newspaper editor wrote that the Missouri question involves not only the future character of our nation, but the future weight and influence over the free states. If now lost, it is lost forever. The Missouri Compromise. For more than a year, Congress angrily debated the Missouri question. Finally, in 1820, a compromise was reached. At this time, Maine and Northern New England was also ready for statehood. Congress admitted Maine, and just over a year later, Missouri was admitted. Maine was admitted as a free state and Missouri as a slave state. That kept the balance between the slave and the free states. At the same time, Congress drew a line starting at Missouri's southern border, which was at 36 degrees and 30 degrees north latitude, straight across the rest of the Louisiana Purchase. Congress prohibited slavery in territories above the line that permitted slavery in territories below it. This came to be known as the Missouri Compromise. For the time being, the Missouri Comp Compromise quieted the anger over the spread of slavery by making a law that dealt with slavery in all the remaining Western lands owned by the United States. Congress thought it had settled the slavery question once and for all. Time would show how wrong Congress was. 
All right, so here is a map, and this map is showing the Missouri Compromise and how it attempted to settle the question of how of the spread of slavery. And here you can kind of see which states were slave states, which states were um, non-slave states, um, and it also shows some of those territories too. So next, you're going to read Chapter 4. Remember, Chapter 4 is all about abolitionists and about the Underground Railroad and about how people are starting to be anti-slavery. So make sure you read this and think about that big question as you're reading it. How did abolitionists and the people of the Underground Railroad, including Harriet Tubman, fight against slavery? This chapter is so important and, in my opinion, one of my favorite chapters in this unit. So the independent work for today. So today you're going to read, um, it's this worksheet here, it's called Two African American Spirituals. So a spiritual is like a poem, and it's a poem about slavery. So here you're going to read two poems about slavery that are kind of coded to uh, tell us a story. Okay, so I want you to compare and contrast differences and similarities of these two spirituals. Remember, on the outside of the circles, you're showing the differences of both poems. In the center, you're showing how they are similar. Hi, boys and girls. Here are some reminders before we say goodbye. Don't forget to comply any active assessments on Edulastic, so just double and triple check that. Make sure you're doing your eye ready math and reading. Remember, all you need to do is about 10 minutes a day to meet the 45 minute requirement at the end of the week. Um, and complete math and ELA assess assignments and videos. Remember, we're monitoring your Go Guardian throughout the week, so make sure you're using your Chromebook as if you are at school. And also, don't forget that we are tracking your assignment completion in a separate tracker. So every single time you turn in your assignments, we are going into a separate tracker and we're, we're checking it complete, incomplete, or still missing. So make sure that you're turning in your assignments in a timely manner. If you have any struggles with doing that, please reach out and let us know. We're happy to help you and we're here to help and support you. All right, scholars, I hope you have a great day. Be good and have fun. Miss you.